Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ingeborg and this channel's name is A Stitch Too Far and I talk about mainly stitching. Um, welcome, it's Sunday, it's pretty sunny outside still but fall is definitely coming guys. Um, temperatures are dropping, leaves are falling, yep. It's gonna get dark. Anyway, how are you doing? I hope you are all very well and have been stitching your hearts out. And I have a feeling this might be a longer one, so get your beverages out and get your stitching out and let's have some updates and some discussion. Um, I have uh, some whips to share, some new starts. I've been prepping for my holiday and I have a few purchases and some happy mail and some books that I would like to talk about. So let's just start with uh, the projects that you've seen before, the works in progress. I worked, uh, I, I, it's, it feels like longer ago because I've worked on a lot of projects in the past few weeks, but actually most of them were started like in the last week. So. <laughs> Uh, well, after the last time we saw each other, I worked on the Bee Sisters, Mirabilia, the garden party. And I finished the skin on the lady to the right, which I'm dubbing Elena. And because I have dubbed her Elena, I had to change some of her hair because in the picture... I don't know if you can tell, but there are some blonde streaks in her hair and Elena is a beautiful brunette. So I darkened up the hair and basically I think this is done except for the beading and of course the back stitching uh, for the face, which looks a bit weird now. But yeah, I'm happy to say this side is done and I can focus on getting uh, Olivia finished. Um, yeah, nothing else to say, um, except as usual, I will have any information on my projects and uh, the things I used in the description box. And yeah, not sure when I will be working on this again, because now that winter is coming, I think I'm going to at least get Takapuna Beach out again. Mm -hmm. That almost fell. And of course some Christmas stitching. So yeah, not sure um, when I'll be picking that up again. Um, next, uh, let's think. Oh yeah. I've been getting ready to sort out the projects that I want to take with me to on my holiday and to the retreat. And because uh, Arlene informed me that she will be there, I decided to pick up one of her patterns. Uh, works by ABC. I will link her below. This is the Praise of the Needle. And last time you saw it, I was, wor I, I, I was working on this big band beneath. And I basically decided that... I was going to take this with me to the retreat and show it to Arlene in person. And for that purpose, I wanted to have it almost finished so that I could actually finish it up at retreat. I thought that would be fun to do. So I did and I worked about a week full on it. And as you can tell, it is practically finished now. Uh, so basically I worked on the lower band, I filled those in, I, I finished this one and I almost finished this one because I don't know if you can tell, but this part is empty. I really had to restrain myself <laughs> to stop myself from stitching on it because yeah, I love how this turned out and I can't wait to finish it at retreat and have a picture with it and Arlene. Yeah, I love this. So now all I have to do is remember to actually put it in my luggage. So let's hope that I remember. I feel like I'm jinxing myself now. <laughs> oh well. 
There's that one. Um, so yeah, an almost finish. I have been working on this for a long time. I think I started this. It's one of the first patterns I actually bought from Marlene, I think. I'm not sure. Might have been. Yeah, love this. Um, then I have a story to tell. Because something else I partly finished for a while now and uh, have loved very much is my husband, otherwise known as Ross Originals Aboriginal Art, the Barramundi. And I've always wanted to have the accompanying long neck tortoise as well. And I figured. Because it's just a few colors, I might as well get started on this and bring it with me as a holiday piece. Because it is on 40 count, but it's not hard to stitch on with good magnification and I have that. So I thought I needed some extra excitement in my marriage. Let's put it like that. So I started on him. Him this week <laughs> and I got quite a lot done. I'll show you my husband first. I'm not sure for those of you who haven't seen him before, but this is my finish of the Barramundi and that is absolutely lovely. I love, love, love this uh, uh, fabric that is from XJU Design. It just works perfectly with the colors. And now I'm adding in the turtle, the tortoise. So basically I decided that I was contemplating whether I would stitch single pieces and display them separately, but I decided on one piece. So I've just, I'm starting to stitch it close to the, to the fish. And basically I got a little leg and part of the shell done and his little tail. And basically I'm working on outlining him as, as much as I can so that it will be easy stitching for my holiday. Again, absolutely love this and I will have so much fun bringing this on my trip. And that's that one. And then uh, something else that I started for my trip is something that I already stitched before uh, for a gift. And I want to stitch it for myself as well. That's this one. By Renate Parlin, uh, what's it called? Fleur et Fruit number nine, the pumpkin, perfect for fall. I looked if I had this, the exact same fabric, but I didn't have quite didn't enough size for that. So I am stitching this on um, another XJU design. It's called Sea of Mud. It's a 32 count linen and I think it will be perfect. It's like a nice sort of a coffee with milk kind of color. And I made a little start so that I have my place and then I can work on it whenever I like. I thought Sea of Mud was also an excellent choice in the end <laughs> because I'm, I've been reading about Washington DC and Virginia and there's a new book, an audio book coming out, which I think is called Empire of Mud. It's about Washington DC. So I thought that was funny when I saw the name. It reminded me and it's perfect for the trip that way. So yeah, and it's only six DMC. So I'm bringing those in an easy, easily, easy to bring as a as a travel piece. Okay, let's do that later. Cheers. Um, then since autumn is coming, I decided I was ready to pick this piece back up again. Uh, this is the autumn box by the Virginia, uh, the Virginia, the Victoria sampler. I'm not sure. I think it's still available. I got this off uh, a really good sale once at so-and-so. 
Uh, and last time you saw it, I had finished the top part. This is all going to be stitched and sewn together. So now I'm starting on one of the longer sides of the lid of the box. And I've done just an amazing amount of work. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell. Just four little leaves. Uh, it took a while to get started and counting properly on this, so I'm hoping that maybe today I can work on it a bit more and see if I'm actually positioning these right, because I'm not quite sure. But yeah. Uh, and they came with a little kit with everything in it, so uh, all, the, all the threads and uh, beads and ribbon that I need for it. I have all in one sim simple package. I'm still contemplating if I'm going to bring that piece. Um, we'll see. But I think the three that I have, and I have two small, uh, like a Mill Hill kit travel piece, I'll bring those two and that should be plenty. So, um, Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to mention. Yeah. Uh, before I go on to share what I got in the mail and what I ordered myself, I just wanted to do a couple of uh, PSA, I think it's called, uh, just some uh, notif notifications or what do you want to announcements, public service announcements. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Time for holidays. Um, so uh, I did a giveaway recently and in the last video that I uploaded, I shared the winners and neither of them have contacted me. So I have decided that I'm going to give them another chance to get in touch with me via email. My email is in the description box uh, to let me know their address so I can send them their prize if they don't respond before uh, the next time I do a video update, then um, I guess I'm going to redraw. So who knows? Uh, but just, you know, just a little heads up for those that did win. I'm not sure I remember the names, but just go back to my previous video. They are numbered in sequence, so it should be hard to find. And check if you are, if you are the winner and get in touch with me through email. And the other thing... Oh yeah, which I got something in the mail that I can't show. But I just wanted to say hi Denise, thank you very much. Um, I already contacted you, but uh, we, as I mentioned, we are doing a round robin and uh, we just had our little swap of projects. So I mailed my project to Emma and now I received the next one from, from Dunja and that is Denise's piece. So. Yeah, looking forward to working on it, but I think I will keep that for when I get back from my holiday uh, instead of trying to stressfully work on it before I go. <laughs> it's really nice and I really look forward to stitching on it. So um, that was the PSA, I think. Oh yeah, another PSA. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous, previous video, there are a few uh, stitching shops that I will be trying to visit on my trip. And I've mentioned the locations and the dates. I thank you all for the feedback on that and those who got in touch with me through email about possibly meeting up there. I just want to reiterate that um, uh, I'm on holiday, so I never know if my, my plans will change. But uh, the dates that I set, I, will, I expect to be there. But if not, if you want to make sure, the best way to make sure is to email me. Uh, and I will keep in touch with you about my plans. Uh, yeah. So, things I got in the mail. Uh, yeah, let's start with this one. Are you ready? This is my year of unicorns. 
because I showed you uh, a Maya kit. I think not in my previous video, but in the one before that I won on eBay. And I mentioned that it was part of a set of two and that I was still looking for the other one. And someone very kindly got in touch with me and mentioned that they had stitched both and they had they still had the patterns and if I was interested they would be happy to ship them to me. And they did and I am over the moon because now I have Sakura. This is the one I, I was missing. The other one is the blue one. I'm trying to remember the name. I think it's me. Doesn't say here. I think I will look it up and, and the other one. But yeah, so are your kids ready? <laughs> Brook, Kovalenko, thank you so much. It's so nice to have the pattern and, and um, I can kit it up because I know how much anchor floss I need and which colors I need and that I know which fabric I can match up with the other one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So, besides that wonderful uh, stitchy kindness, I received my next monthly installment of my Silks for You Silk Club and I never remember the name right so it's the one where they are sending out four skeins of the regular uh, uh, silks that are available online anyway so it's not the one where they dye a specific color especially for that uh, club but it's just uh, the regular silk club where they uh, give out four of their regular silks uh, every month. And this month I am really, really, really happy with the selection because they are my colors totally. So uh, if you don't want to be spoiled, although the next one should be arriving any time now, so <laughs> that will be very late if you haven't seen them yet. But in, in case, uh, just look away uh, for five minutes and I will share uh, which ones I have. I'm not sure if the number showing up, but I might edit it in anyway. Beautiful. It's not as vibrant as it shows. I never know why, but these colors are hard to film. Uh, and I have a new trick that I want to try out. Let's see if that helps. Actually, it kind of does help. So this new trick. Um, I see a lot of people using white backgrounds and I tend to find that it still washes out the color. And I saw someone in a, in a different type of video use a black background, oh yeah, in a nail polish video, <laughs> use a black background and I noticed that did work a lot better for the color. So that's why I, I wanted to try out a dark background. So yeah, that looks better. We'll have to try on our famous PRO. PR147. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it definitely looks better. I will uh, add the numbers. And then these two. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. I was so happy when I opened this slot. <laughs> yeah, definitely gonna stick around at the, for the club for a little longer because yeah, look at those. Oh my gosh. Yep, that's gonna go into some, I don't know, maybe a long dog. I don't know. We'll see. And then uh, I couldn't resist anymore. Um, uh, anyone who is in the UK might be very familiar with this design or, or store, but Lakeside Needlecraft. Lakeside Needlecraft is an online store. They sell anything stitchy related, but they also have stitch alongs with uh, uh, like mystery stitch alongs where they release a pattern slowly. And I have been eyeing this one. The 
East Asian inspirations for a while now to see how much I liked it because I, from the first picture I was hooked and uh, they've not let me down this far so I decided finally at part nine <laughs> to join in and I purchased the sampler so this is the, the parts that have been released so far uh, so there's still three more to come uh, these two and one on the bottom um, uh, it's a digital release so you can uh, order it and then you'll see if your uh, the, par the parts that have been released already through your email as a PDF and then the next ones will come at the first of every month until I guess December the last one yeah I couldn't resist anymore I, I just I love this and it's all blues and creams and it's all DMC and it's just absolutely stunning and I'm gonna have to stitch it someday I'm not sure when I'll start it though because yeah that's quite a lot of stitching as well I will have to finish some more big pieces I think yep definitely go check them out I leave a link below to their online site and there you can see they have plenty of uh, I think also some free uh, stitch alongs but their stitch alongs are really nice and then um, there was a sale in one of our local needle workshops in the Netherlands and there were some patterns from Alte Mustertuger <laughs> Sabine Tatera who is a German designer who um, uh, reproduces who makes reproduction patterns of old samplers at our in museums and things like that uh, I'll link her website I'm not sure if it's in English <coughs> but she also has hard copy uh, patterns and they were on sale so I got one that I've been eyeing for a while which is this uh, uh, darning darning sampler it's a sampler but it's all darning stitches so long uh, yeah I don't know I think it's darning no, I've said darning so many times <laughs> but yeah I love this it's a small one just to try out and see if I like it and then my sexy glasses that you all have seen and a lot of you also have bought um, they broke so I switched to the this band for a while because uh, it was I was struggling with keeping it nice uh, without slipping off my nose and then um, I think I might have stretched it out too much because this side broke so I fixed that and then the other side broke exactly at the same spot so I was sort of in a panic <laughs> because I use these for traveling and I'm going to travel so I need these so I, find, I found a Dutch site that I will link below which had them on sale for 10 bucks so I got the exact same exact same thing only with their logo on it um, and it shipped within a day or two and shipping was also cheap so I got them even cheaper than the last pair so if you need those Go check them out and you're in the Netherlands. Uh, I think that's all I have received in the mail. I'm waiting on my new silk of the month. And I'm waiting on something that um, someone is sending me. And I hope I arrive, it arrives before I leave, but we'll see. Let's see. Yeah, just one more thing, and that's books. Uh, I subscribed to Audible a little while ago because I wanted to have re read more books because I find that audiobooks work very well for me because I've picked up a home trainer, so I have a bike ride of, of an hour in the evening and that's a great time for audiobooks or to catch up on some videos as well as uh, on my walks or just on long car drives it's it's better to listen to a good book than to 
the trashy news uh, that just keeps coming. So uh, I'm trying out Audible and I like it and I have asked you before through Instagram about some books that, uh, that would be good to read for my trip. And I got some great um, uh, feedback, <laughs> sorry, words. Uh, and I finished a few of them and I, I'm also almost done with uh, some of them. So I thought I would share with you my thoughts. And uh, let's see how this works. So yeah. Um, uh, one of them that I did, I, f I read first is a people. Oh, no. This is on. Let's not do that. Okay. Apparently I can't show it to you, but yeah. <laughs> Let's just read it out because that's easier. So, uh, A People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn. It is a comprehensive uh, history telling which. Uh, as the title says, it's a people's history, so it focuses more, uh, a lot on uh, different groups within society and shares uh, their opinion on current events in history uh, from their perspective uh, through letters or uh, interviews or uh, uh, like newspaper clippings or things like that or even some court hearing uh, documents and so yeah I thought it was very interesting I realized that um, uh, for uh, America um, American educated people or people educated in America this might be a perspective that they're not used to because uh, it might come across a bit too socialist uh, that might be my prejudice, but <laughs> uh, reading some of the audible reviews, that was something that stuck out to me that um, people thought it wasn't very patriotic. And that's true because that's not the purpose of writing history. Uh, well, it could be, but that's more of a political purpose for writing history. I thought it was very interesting and it gave me some um, a good start starting point of an overview of the history of the country and certain uh, events within that time that I would be interested in reading more about. Uh, the production on Audible was not great. It wasn't bad either, but yeah, the, the, there was some issue with uh, volume sometimes or background noises that, you know, production should on that but all in all loved it and uh, then uh, the underground railroad which is uh, not which is a fiction well historical fiction it's by uh, Colson Whitehead it was uh, an Oprah book also I think Oprah book of the month or something like that Oprah club book club I don't know what it's called uh, I enjoyed that. It's about the Underground Railroad as in the, the system of uh, safe houses and uh, uh, escape routes for uh, runaway slaves from the south uh, to the north of the United States. Um, I was very confused uh, at the start because um, the author chose to uh, to use the Underground Railroad as a um, metaphor uh, for actually being a true railroad, like with locomotives and rails, instead of what it was, because it wasn't an under liter it wasn't literally a railroad underground, but. Uh, the author chose to use it, use that metaphor, uh, I think because he just wanted, or he, I'm not sure if it's she or he, they wanted to um, uh, focus on everything around that instead of on the journey of that railroad, I think. But that was confusing to me because I actually had to look it up <laughs> to see, because in my mind, it wasn't a literal railroad, so that 
that kind of threw me off. But all in all, it is a, 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 an entertaining read and it does uh, give insight into the things and the choices that run away, that slaves and, um, well, I, well, and runaways were uh, confronted with and their motivations uh, for choosing a certain path. That was very interesting to me and that, that brought it more close to what it must have felt like to be in that situation and make those choices. So yeah, that was impressive for me. That's I would definitely recommend the book, but just just <laughs> just don't yeah, just don't get confused by the actual railroad uh, um, uh, parts. Um, then. Um, I'm trying to see what this one was. Um, I think this is about. This is audible. Uh, Body of Proof, which is an audible original. I think this is about. Yeah. There was a murder case in England and uh, somebody was convicted for that and the body of the victim was never found and the person who was convicted claims to be innocent and uh, when you dive into the case there are arguments for that innocence. Uh, so that was, uh, I'm trying not to trying to think of the names of the persons involved but I can't remember so I might I might add a link to some page about it but yeah that was interesting two journalists just follow the trail of uh, what do we actually know uh, what how the how was the case handled what evidence was there and what evidence was actually used as evidence in the case and uh, what was the judge's opinion or what was the jury's opinion, things like that. And they present it all and come up with their own sort of conclusion in the end. Um, that was quite interesting, but not related at all to my uh, trip. <laughs> and at the moment, I am still uh, almost at the end of um, a series of lectures by a professor of Virginia University, I think. Uh, this is another recommendation. Uh, this is a lecture series called the American Civil War. That's obvious what it's about by uh, Professor Gary W. Gallagher. Um, yeah, just if you want to know a lot about the Civil War, how it started, what people were thinking at the time and saying at the time about that. Uh, uh, a lot of details about all kinds of battles and, and generals, but also just uh, insight into uh, what certain uh, groups in society were going through, uh, like uh, women in the north, women in the south, uh, black people in the north, black people in the south, uh, uh, white men uh, in north and south, etc. That's for me. That was very interesting to get a better better grip on how things got started, uh, um, how lucky it was that people had the victory or not and what sort of circumstances dictated those and yeah I'm almost at the end so yeah uh, if this is really a series for people who are really interested uh, if you just want to summer a summary don't go listen to a 42 part lecture series <laughs> but yeah if you are really interested in the details and uh, a, a very um, object objective look at you know just just the situation at the time not in retrospect but just from letters of, of that period or newspapers of that period describing what people were thinking and saying about the situation that was really interesting for me um, yep. So, um, 
not sure what's gonna be next, but on my wish list are <laughs> some other stuff as well. Definitely the new book by uh, Mr. Snowden, but um, I might try and find uh, some more books about the uh, first war, so the War of Independence and um, yeah, don't know. I'll check my uh, uh, recommendations that you gave me and we'll see what I bring with me. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. If that wasn't interesting, then I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and that's all I had to share, except for one last thing, because that's becoming a thing now. So I just I just did my nails again and I don't know if you can tell but I used a different topping so I'm into full colors now so this is uh, SC Angora Cardi which is showing up really pink but in truth it's more of a a mauve <laughs> mauve uh, mauve I say mauve so it's um, like a dusty pink with hints of brown and I'm using a different topping I'm using a matte topping and then I really like the effect and I think it's a good thing for fall because it looks kind of uh, a velvety mauve now it looks very saturated here but let's see if this works <laughs> yeah it still looks too dark but yeah it's not that dark but anyway just in case you're interested that's uh, all I have to share um, there will be some more videos coming up uh, during my trip um, but I'm not sure how many because I don't know uh, if I can get to all of them <laughs> I have an idea about doing a series about uh, something not stitchy related because I've been uh, reintroduced to the Myers-Briggs typology system of personality system and at the moment that's really helping me get through some things and behaviors that I need to work on and remind me of that I've already had to work on them before <laughs> but yeah I, I yeah I got really interested again in that topic so I thought it would be fun and I, I talked about this on Instagram too and I noticed that there were a lot of people with similar types so I thought it could be fun to just have a few videos about what it is and how it works and how you can use it for your benefit um, if you're interested in that let me know in the comments because then I know if it's worthwhile all the effort of making a series of videos about that so I don't know when exactly I will have my new video out my new update video out because there will be other videos coming but probably not before the end of October early November not sure depends on how much time I have and how much energy I have <laughs> Uh, so for now I'm just gonna say I hope to see you soon uh, I hope to see you at retreat or if not then through another update video and I wish you all well and lots and lots of happy stitching time bye guys <laughs>